April the 27th is the feast of St. Peter Canisius, who died in 1597, 80 years after Luther nailed the theses to the cathedral door in Wittenberg to begin the Reformation. His life was defined by the Reformation, effectively. He was born four years after Luther's nailing act in 1521. And when he was about 20 years old, he fell in with one of the early Jesuits, Peter Faber, a companion of St. Ignatius. Faber was famous for his attempts at dialoguing with the reformers, and he traveled up and down the River Rhine, using Carthusian monasteries as places of, of dialogue with people who are, were moving away from the Catholic Church. And he had a very distinctive style of dialogue, speaking very gently with people, not at all disputing or anything. And Canisius, Canisius was very impressed by, by Faber and particularly by his method of doing things. And there's a quotation from him that um, maybe is worth listening to. It's plainly wrong to meet non-Catholics with bitterness or to treat them with discourtesy, for this is nothing else than the reverse of Christ's example, because it breaks the bruised reed and quenches the smoking flax. We ought to instruct with meekness those whom heresy has made bitter and suspicious, and as estranged from Orthodox Catholics, especially from our fellow Jesuits. Thus, by wholehearted charity and goodwill, we may win them over to us in the Lord. So Canisius's life was a, a lifetime of conversations with people who had made that journey away, and many people returned on the journey because of his conversations and because of his writings. One of the things that sometimes we forget is how recent the, recently was the development of printing, the printing press, and how that helped the spread of the, the new doctrines of, of the Reformation, particularly Luther's catechism and sort of all sorts of controversial writings. Canisius himself in time produced one major catechism to sort of counterbalance Luther's catechism and two smaller ones. He was absolutely tireless in travelling in Bavaria, Austria and Bohemia. He founded universities in Freiburg and Prague, schools everywhere. If you go to, throughout the German-speaking lands, there's always a Canisius school or a Canisius university somewhere or other. He kind of poured out his life trying to reconcile people to the church from which many of them had strayed or walked away. He had this little prayer that he used to say, well, if you don't feel that you've got enough time to do all the things you're supposed to do, allow God to provide the time for you to do it. <laughs>